Right, hello, welcome everyone. Uh, in today's tutorial, I actually want to talk over how I made this really long, like, intro pad type thing in my latest release, Infiltrate, which as of right now is coming out tomorrow. Um, but you're probably watching this in the future, so it's probably already out. Um, I'm going to show you what the intro sounds like. Uh, if you want to hear the drop, go to the link in the description and listen to it. Uh, but yeah, this is the type of pad that we're going to be making today. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, the intro to Infiltrate. Um, it's a very simple intro made up of two things. There's that one long pad that we're going to talk about, and then there's just a little arpeggiator sequence here, uh, which I'm not going to talk about because I don't want to. Uh, I want to focus on this pad. Uh, so this pad I actually made on my analog synth, uh, the Korg Minilog XD. Um, but never fear, you don't need one of them. You can still do it in Serum, that's what we're going to do today. Um, I just made it on that at the time because I felt like it. I was just messing around with buttons and came up with that sequence. Uh, but yeah, we can do the same in Serum. Uh, I just want to show you what it looks like through Span so you can sort of see what harmonics are going on. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of low end in this pad. Not a huge amount of mid range. Obviously, you've got the hi hats going on, but then you hear it kind of comes up around a thousand hertz. Um, that's the filter cut off going. But uh, yeah, so let's take a look at a pad in Serum. Uh, I'm just doing this from scratch, to be honest. I just kind of want to show you the creative process that I'd normally do. Uh, there's no rules to this. Um, it's just the way I like to do it, um, and that was that was yeah that was one thirty-two bar sequence for that intro the whole way through. Um, so we're going to do the same here. There we go, thirty-two. Drag that down, and as well because I did it on my analog synth, I'm going to limit myself to only the analog basic shape oscillators. Um, because obviously, well, it's got some digital wavetables on it, the, mon the mini log, but I don't think I've used them in this patch. So, um, yeah, I think I actually started with uh, a triangle wave. Um, and what you'll notice about the sound in Infiltrate is there's like a lot of width and sort of vibrato and stuff to it which we'll add later so throughout this process it's going to sound a bit rubbish from the start but we'll sort of get into it more um, yeah I think I used a saw wave on the second one when I did it on the synth tune them slightly. It might even be worth sticking a sub in there. Just going to turn it up on my headphones. Um, the key to this sort of sound um, is having your filter cut off really low down with quite a high resonance um, and that creates a sort of those sort of tones which you have in that intro pad that I showed you. Um, so yeah, I think I might bring this one up an octave maybe. All 
All right, that's a good starting point. Um, now, normally from here, start bringing out some more harmonics from the sound. Especially when you distort it afterwards as well. Nice. I kind of get carried away a bit there. Um, and I want to add a bit of width to it, even though there's some width from that unison, it's still not wide enough. Um, and I remember on the mini log I used the ensemble effect, which is basically the same thing as dimension, it's kind of like a unison. Sounds pretty cool. Might even make that filter a bit steeper. It's all about just finding a, a sweet spot um, with these kind of things. Next thing would normally be to stick a bit of delay on there. Um, I, I kind of just keep it pretty basic settings when I do a delay. Um, and that's really helpful. Well, one thing that I do change is I bring this cutoff up a bit um, so that it doesn't send any low end into the delay. So if you have it around like, I don't know, 600, hard to get it right, it's quite sensitive. Around there, um, the delay only then comes when you open up that cutoff. I don't know if you can hear that, um, but the next step would be to add a like fat multi-band compressor or OTT afterwards because that really brings out the tails of those delays. Um, I, I wouldn't have had like an OTT on my um, mini log, but I probably had one afterwards um, when I was processing the pad. So yeah, you listen to what it does to the delay, and you'll see just how useful it is. Could even push that a bit, a bit more. Yeah, I think that sounds quite cool. Um, the compressor does love to make the delay click, though. Uh, um, yeah, let's get a bit of reverb on there. I don't really like the Serum stock reverb, to be honest. Um, so I'm not going to use it. Uh, but I'm going to do something else. Like I mentioned with this uh, pad in Infiltrate, it has a lot of like wobbly vibrato to it. Uh, which this pad won't have, because at the minute there's none set up, like it's not analog. And the thing that makes analog analog is the unpredictability of it like you can't because it's all electrical signals and stuff you can't get the same thing every single time now we can replicate that in serum with chaos because uh, chaos is this little thing here that just moves chaotically <laughs> at whatever rate you set it to but like an lfo uh it's almost like if you've ever used uh certain synths have it but um there might be a shape in here. No, that's not, but if you was basically to load like the waveform of a white noise file into an LFO and have that shape of like going everywhere that white noise has, that would be the same as a chaos oscillator basically. Um, not quite, but in layman's terms, I think.
think that sounds really cool. Let's get a reverb on there. Um, yeah, I usually use a shimmer reverb on most things, and it actually has a shimmer on the mini log, so I'm sure I probably would have used that. I might make that delay a bit longer actually, now that I mention it, because it just might give it more of a soundscape kind of vibe. I just want to bring that down a bit more as well. It's quite hard to. Yeah, definitely getting there. Um, maybe just see what I can do with that chaos. I might even be able to bring it up a bit more. That was a bit loud, sorry about that. Kind of got a bit carried away there. Um, a bit of white noise wouldn't go amiss as well. I probably had some of that on the mini log at the time rather than the sub. I don't think we really need the sub necessarily. Oh yeah. Uh, I think I probably used sync as well. Sync is I probably even used a bit of FM to be honest as well. Let's let's see what we can do with that. Probably want to clean up the sound a little bit at this point. Um, get rid of the any side low end in the side. I mean, probably most of the signals in the side now anyway. But um, probably bring down a bit of the. Just a bit of control. But I also kind of want to distort a little bit after the reverb as well. And even to get even more tones out of it, um, go for the infamous phase 48 that I love using. Nice. Uh, now to the fun part. Your automations. Um, so many things you can do to bring this sound to life even more. So we're going to do it. So I'm creating five automation clips here. Um, one for each macro and then the pitch bend. The macro one, uh, I think I assigned to the FM. Yeah, macro two went onto the sync. Macro three went onto filter cutoff, and macro four is on the unison detune. Which, when you move that, will really change the sound quite a bit. Um, I think it'd be best to start with the movement of the filter before we start messing with the FM and the sync because the filter obviously opening up is what really brings out those higher tones which the FM and the sync will affect the most. Uh, 
and I want to do like a little shape sort of like that which was probably something that I would have done when I I'm just trying to think how I'd be doing this on an analog synth because I'd actually be um, tweaking them rather than drawing them in on a clip like this Yeah, that's nice. We can bring it down again for that. Um, yeah, we'll start adding some pitch bend to that now. Even though we've got sort of a vibrato going on from the shimmer reverb and also what I want to do, speaking of vibrato, RC20, I want to get a bit of that on there. Because that wobble feature is amazing. Give it even more analogness. In an ideal world, you'd convert this to audio and then cut out any bleeps like that. Uh, yeah, let's add a bit of pitch bend. Really subtle with the pitch bend, I think, on these type of sounds. You don't want to go too much. See, I went a bit too much there. Awesome. I think that's got pretty nice pitch movement to it. Um, yeah, let's start playing around with the FM then. So it kind of the filter comes up around here. So I want it to maybe just go with that a little bit, but after the filter. Oh yeah, I think that added quite a nice little movement. Hundred percent sure on that. Yeah, maybe not with the FM there, but somewhere else. Again, a lot of this is just trial and error. Um, just trying to find sweet spots for stuff. Maybe if we change the sync first and then the FM. Yeah, cool. Uh, let's see what we can do with this unison detune as well. It might be that I'll have to go into the synth and change what direction that it's going, but we'll see. We'll try it out first. Let's just add some subtle sort of movement like that. Something like that will do. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, awesome. So I think that's a really cool sound just there. Um, I know it's only nine bars, um, eight bars, sorry. And that the pad that I showed you is 32 bars, but this principle is basically just copied throughout the whole way, just you know, drawing in or manually automating these little knobs and just trying to bring out 
different sounds and characters and nuances and stuff. Uh, let's try to stick a bit of FM, a bit of FM at the end instead. See if that helps. It. Really grotty, um, and you know you can even further resample this kind of stuff. Maybe get like a trance gate on there after all the reverb and everything. Or even before. There's many possibilities. quite like that. I think that sounds pretty cool. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to think what else you could do to it. I mean, it's a pretty full sound as it is. There's not really much more that needs to be done to it. Sometimes less is more. Um, maybe even just shaving off a bit of I thought I heard a kick drum or something there. I thought I was bugging. It's just uh FL, well, it's just that delay on that compressor. Um, but, you know, like I said, you'd normally record this audio and go from there. Speaking of recording it to audio, what I want to do is reverse it. See what that does to it. Well, we're just gonna get the delay tail um, at first. But if we just drag it. Yeah, it'll be about there. See so yeah, how that sounds, might sound cool reversed. I think I preferred it uh, how it was originally, but yeah, you can definitely get some cool results out of reversing it. Maybe even pogo it. <laughs> See what some pogo does to the sound. <laughs> pogo normally messes up a sound quite a lot, so I'm not expecting good results here. It sounds like a like an old Spitfire taking off almost. <laughs> Depends what context of sort of tune you're going for. I mean, that could work in some aspects, uh, but you could even normalise it and you know change the shape a bit. you know, make like a impact type thing out of it. Um, if you was to like stick a bit more reverb on it or something. You know, in context of a tune, if you're just making like an intro or something, it could be a nice little um, like repeated sort of stab element. Um, but yeah, I think I'll leave the, the video there. I think I've taught you some pretty cool things, especially considering most of that was done within Serum. 
Um, there's definitely some techniques to be learned for everyone there. Main takeaways would be don't be scared to just use basic oscillators. You don't always need to use complex wavetables, although I'm sure it would sound cool with some, um, but you don't always need them. Just mess around with what you've got, the FM, the sync, your unison, high resonances, your delays, stuff like that. Um, yeah. I think I shall leave it at that. Don't forget to stream Infiltrate. It is out on all platforms. Uh, and you can grab it for a free download on SoundCloud. Because um, I'm kind like that. Alright, see you in the next one.